Hungarian folk tales. The Golden Calf. Once upon a time, there lived a king and a queen, and they had a handsome, strong son and a beautiful daughter. One day, the king called his children. Dear son, it's time for you to go out, find a maiden, and get married. I'm getting old, and you should take over the burdens and problems of the land from me. And you, my daughter, should choose someone whom you would be willing to marry. Father, I do not need anyone. There is not a maiden in this land who was born for me. The daughter continued, I don't want to get married, father dear. There is no prince in this land for me. The king became very angry. Get out of here, both of you. I don't want to see you if you are so picky and choosy. So the prince and the princess set out to see the world. As they were walking across the hills, they walked and walked until they became very tired. They rested underneath a tree and they soon fell fast asleep. When the girl awoke, she called her brother. I had a dream, brother. Do you know what I saw? What did you see? Tell me. In my dream, I saw that this tree has magical powers. If you pick a leaf and touch it to the forehead of a sick man, that man will be healed right there and then. And not far from here flows a stream. And even if that man is half dead, he will be cured if he drinks from the water. Let's give it a try. They collected a bunch of leaves and filled their sacks with them. The girl filled her canteen with water and they continued on their journey. They were walking and walking until they reached another land where everyone was dressed in black. Good woman, what's the reason for mourning in this land? My dear son, the prince is so ill that no one can cure him. Our prince said to his sister, let's go and cure him. So they both dressed as doctors and went to see the king. The king was only too pleased to let them in. The princess walked up to the prince and placed some leaves on his forehead. And at that very moment, the prince looked up, their eyes met, and they smiled at each other. The brother of the princess stepped up to the bed and gave the prince a few sips of the healing water. The sick prince sat up in an instant, and he was a hundred times healthier than ever before. I'm not going to let you go. Whoever you are, you will be my wife. The brother told his sister, well, sister, now you've found your true love. It's time for me to walk on until I find mine. And with that, he continued on his journey. And at one point along the way, he heard the sound of drums. The drummers were announcing that the princess would marry the man who found what mark she had under her arm. There were dozens and dozens of candidates who came to try their luck, but none of them had any success. As he was walking around in the town, thinking hard about the riddle, a blacksmith looked out of his window and called to the young man. Where are you going and why? I heard the drums and the announcement and I am supposed to guess what mark the princess has under her arm. Well, that's easy. I have a lot of gold. I could use that to make a golden calf. Somebody could curl up inside that calf and we can take the calf to market. The princess will see the golden calf and will buy it. And the person inside the calf will find out what mark she has under her arm. The prince said, what if that person were me? Well, all right. We can agree on that. In the morning, the prince climbed inside the golden calf and they transported it right to the middle of the marketplace. It wasn't long before the king and the princess came walking by. Father dear, father dear, please buy this one for me. It would look so beautiful in the palace. And she kept on pleading until her father bought the golden calf for his daughter. 
he told his men to place the golden calf into his daughter's room. Evening came, and the princess undressed and went to bed. When the prince was convinced that she was asleep, he opened the little door, climbed out, slowly walked to her bed and peeked under her left arm. And suddenly he saw what was there. The sun, the moon and the stars. He laughed out loud, but he woke the princess up. When she saw the stranger in her room, she let out a scream. But the prince was not afraid and he spoke to the princess. Stop screaming, lest they find out that I'm here with you. The two of them started talking. They agreed that she would have the calf taken back to the blacksmith. And so it happened. In the morning, her father came in. Oh, father dear, father dear, I accidentally broke off one of its ears. Let's have it taken back to the blacksmith so he can place it back. They took back the golden calf, the blacksmith opened the side door and the prince climbed out. That afternoon, the prince went to see the king. Your Majesty, please give me three days to think and I'll find out the truth. And he pretended to think long and hard. Finally, the third day came and the princess could hardly wait. The king spoke, so, did you find out? Well, your majesty, she's wearing the sun, the moon and the stars under her arm. Well, by golly, you're right. You've solved the riddle. You can have my daughter and my kingdom. And they had a fabulous wedding with plenty of food and drink for everyone. Of course they invited the prince's sister and her husband, the other prince, and they did not forget about their parents either. Everyone was happy. The wedding and the party lasted for a whole week, and they all lived happily ever after. Hungarian Folk Tales The Silken Meadow Once upon a time there lived a great king and the king had a gallant handsome son but alas the king was always sad one day his son decided to ask him why he was always so sad and his father the king replied I see, my son, that you are a valiant man of courage and skill, for you triumph over the finest swordsmen and you fell the most ferocious beasts. But I can find no joy in this, for I have a close friend from whom six months ago I received a message. There is a beautiful silken meadow in the middle of the golden forest. My friend lives there. But the witches were so envious of his wondrous lands that they sent their minions to descend on him in their thousands. He has begged me to come to his aid, but as you see, I am old and I cannot go. Dear father, then I will go. I will wander the forest until I find your friend. Good, my son. May the Lord go with you. But listen closely to me. Behind the stables there is a large pit full of mud. There you will find the horse I rode in my youth. I urge you to take him as your mount. But first you must feed him. In the garden you will find 12 bundles of wood. Set them all aflame, and when they have burnt to cinders, take the horse from the pit and feed him, for he eats nothing but smouldering coals. So he set the wood aflame, and when it had burned to cinders, the prince took the horse from the mud pit and dragged him to the burning coals. 
Then the horse began to eat and grew visibly stronger and more vigorous. When he had finished, his coat glistened. The prince stood gaping in wonder, for he had noticed that the horse had six legs. His father spoke, Now, dear son, go up to the attic. There you will find shimmering swords, but among them you will see one covered with rust. Take it as yours. So the prince went up to the attic and brought down the rusty sword. He tried to draw it from its scabbard, but he was unable. No, son, that is not how you draw this sword. You tell it, sword, come forth from your scabbard. Hardly had the prince uttered these words and the sword flew from the scabbard, slicing the air with a swoosh. Now tell it, sword, come back to your scabbard. Hardly had the prince uttered these words and the sword was already back in its scabbard. Father and son embraced, both shedding tears, they bid farewell. The prince mounted the six-legged horse and the horse flew into the air, straight as an arrow. Then the horse slowed and began to descend into a beautiful forest filled with trees of gold. There the prince set off on foot. Soon he saw the edge of the silken meadow and in the middle of the meadow, a tent. And when he reached the tent, he saw a grey-haired man sleeping on a bed. In one of the corners of the tent there hung a curtain. Pulling the curtain aside, he saw a beautiful gold bed, and in it lay a maiden with golden hair and a golden dress. One of her legs and one of her arms were hanging off the side of the bed, and the prince stepped over to her, took her leg in his hand, and placed it gently back on the bed. The maiden was not asleep, but she watched him out of the corner of one eye. When the prince took her hand to place it on the bed, the maiden wrapped her arms around his neck and kissed him. Let us be man and wife and live together forevermore. I know you are tired, so step back to the middle of the tent and sleep. The prince did as she asked and immediately fell into a deep slumber. As the prince fell asleep, the old man awoke and saw that there was a stranger in the tent. He drew his sword to fell the strange man, and as he was about to strike, it occurred to him to wonder, this man also has a sword. I myself was asleep when he entered. He could have slain me. I will not do him any harm. And when the young prince awoke from his slumber, the old man spoke, Boy, who are you? And what do you seek here? Unless I am mistaken, it is you that I seek. My father sent me to come to your aid. You are the son of my dear friend, the Red King? I am. It is good that you have come, for the witch's minions have been besieging me now for well over a year. And I see you have brought your father's sword, the companion to mine. For you should know, young prince, that no matter how many witches I slay with mine, 10,000 more come in their place. Do you see that huge mountain? An old witch lives in a cavern in the mountainside and she sends her minions in droves to attack me. Until we slay her, I will have no peace. They rose early the next day and as the sun rose, the witch's minions came in droves. And they poured down the mountainside like lava from a hot volcano. Then they drew their swords and slashed them to pieces. The Red Prince set off for the mountain. His saw sliced through the witches like a knife through warm butter. When they reached the hole in the mountainside, he decided to go in and see what lay inside. And what do you think he saw? In the middle of a huge cavern, a loom. And at the loom, an old woman, whose nose was so long and so crooked, it reached the ground. And the old witch pedaled so hard, that every time she lifted the shuttle, a hundred of her minions sprang forth, ordered them to attack the aged man. Go forth to the silken meadow, kill the old man. The prince leapt to the witch's side, took the dagger from his belt and thrust it into her heart. And what happened then? The huge mountain crumbled into dust and was scattered by the winds. In the space of a moment, it was as if it had never even been there. And what was there in its place? A beautiful silken meadow, 
The old man caught his daughter forth and spoke, Good prince, I have no other child, only this one daughter. If you love her, I shall give you her hand in marriage, and with it, my entire kingdom. So the priest came, and the prince and the maiden were married in the silken meadow, and they all lived happily ever after. Hungarian Folk Tales King Matthias and the Lamb with the Golden Fleece The King of Prussia went to see King Matthias. They greeted each other as old friends, and the King of Prussia said, I heard that you have a lamb with a golden fleece. It is true, among the many sheep in my flocks, I have a lamb with a golden fleece, and I have a shepherd who never tells a lie. To this the King of Prussia replied, I will prove to you that you are wrong, for your shepherd does not always speak the truth. This I will not believe, said King Matthias, for my shepherd never lies. I will prove to you that he does, for I will trick him, so that he must. To this King Matthias replied, I am so certain of his honesty that I will give you half my kingdom if he lies. The King of Prussia replied, and I will give you half of mine if he does not. So they shook hands and bid each other good night and the King of Prussia returned to his inn. There he changed his clothes into peasants' rags and went to work in the fields. Meekly he greeted the shepherd and the shepherd replied, Welcome, the Lord's blessing be on you, my king. How do you know I am a king? The shepherd replied, I know from your words you are a king. To this the king of Prussia replied, I will shower you in golden coins. I will give you six horses and the finest carriage if you give me the lamb with the golden fleece. Oh, I could not do that, not for all the gold in the world, for King Matthias would have me hanged. The king of Prussia promised him riches and jewels, but the shepherd did not give in. The King of Prussia returned to his inn, hanging his head in sorrow. His daughter saw this and said, Do not be sad, father. I will go myself, and I will take a coffer of gold coins and trick him myself. So the King's daughter took a coffer full of gold and a bottle of sweet wine with which to trick the shepherd. But the shepherd only answered that he had no need of money, and King Matthias would surely hang him if he lost the lamb with the golden fleece. But the girl persisted, and soon they had drunk the wine, though she had had to have the first sip to prove to him that she had not poisoned the wine. The shepherd was soon in such high spirits that he said he would give her the lamb with the golden fleece if she would spend the night with him. But he had no need of riches or gold, for he had riches enough. The girl did not hesitate, and she agreed to lie down with the shepherd. Then she said to him, Skin the lamb and eat its meat, for I have no need of it, 
I need only its fleece. Brimming with joy, the girl took the fleece back to her home. Her father was overjoyed that his daughter had managed to trick the shepherd. But morning came, and the shepherd was very sad, for he did not know what to say to his king. And as he walked, he stuck his crook in a hole in the ground, hung his hat on its end, stepped back and greeted it as if it were the king. The king, or rather the shepherd's hat, asked, What news do you bring me from the fields? To this the shepherd replied, No news at all, except that the lamb with the golden fleece is gone, for it was eaten by a wolf. And the shepherd shook with fear. You lie, for the wolf would have eaten the rest of the flock as well. The shepherd took his crook under his arm and set off again towards the castle. He ambled and rambled along and he soon came across another hole in the ground, where he stuck his crook in the hole and hung his hat on the end and greeted the figure of the king. What news do you bring me from the fields? No news at all, except that the lamb with the golden fleece stumbled into the well and drowned. You lie, said the king, for the others would have drowned too. So the shepherd carried on until he found a third hole in the ground where he stuck his crook in the hole and hung his hat on the other end and for the third time he greeted the figure of the king. What news do you bring me from the fields? No news at all, except that the lamb with the golden fleece has been stolen. You lie, said the king, for the others would have been stolen too. So for the third time he took his crook from the ground and continued on his way to the castle of King Matthias. In the castle the king was seated at the table together with the king of Prussia and his daughter. The shepherd humbly approached and greeted the two kings and the girl. But the king of Prussia had already given King Matthias the fleece of the golden lamb and now all three were waiting to see if the shepherd would lie or tell the truth. For if he lied, King Matthias would lose half his kingdom. King Matthias asked, What news do you bring me from the fields? No news at all, except that I exchanged the lamb with the golden fleece for a beautiful black sheep. King Matthias was overjoyed, but he replied, Bring this black sheep to me. But the shepherd answered, She is sitting right there between the two kings. Well done, said King Matthias, for you have told no lies, and today I give you half of the lands belonging to the king of Prussia. And I shall give you my daughter's hand in marriage said the King of Prussia, for you already know the taste of each other's lips. And this is how King Matthias Shepherd rose to become the King of Prussia. Mm -hmm.